Good morning, everybody. Okay. Now, some of you may have already worked out. I am quite keen on SpaceX and Starship. I think it's a great idea. And I, I do need to do a video on that, actually, because lots has been going on since I last talked about the awesomeness that's happening down at Starbase in Texas. However, that is for another day. Today, I want to talk about actually vertical farms but you see i've said a number of times in the past that i believe that in particular space has got a a great part to play in furthering the technology at our disposal and i think in particular the challenges involved with going to somewhere like mars mean that technological development is basically assured because the only way to make it on Mars is to be self-sufficient. So what that means is you've got to have all of the technology and all of the capability necessary to cram everything you need to keep a human being alive into something that's self-contained. That technology that enables us to live on Mars can also enable us to live here without impacting the environment. In fact, better than that, we can actually engineer it so that it slowly returns the environment to the way that it should be. And I think one of the key technologies actually kind of exists already, you know, the vertical farms. There was an announcement uh, about a couple of months ago, I think, about a new vertical farm that had opened in Bedford. It's fairly close to where I live here in the UK. And it is... I think a very interesting and exciting technology. It's got a few key benefits over, you know, just growing food in a field. It can be as much as 10 times more efficient from a space point of view, and you can recycle the water. So you're not using anything like as much water resources for agriculture. You can also limit your herbicide and pesticide usage, partly through just having the thing sealed so you don't need as much of it. But also if you do use those substances, you can control them and prevent them from leaking into the wider environment. It's great. You do need power to run these vertical farms, but we've got solar panels. We can do it that way, you know, definitely, or wind. But in order for that to work on Mars, it's going to have to be significantly more efficient again. And I think there's a lot of refinement that comes from that process because they'll put billions, people like NASA and SpaceX will put billions and billions into solving these problems and other businesses as well will spring up to fulfill that need in those contracts and that technology will then trickle down and help everybody to be able to live a bit more sustainably. That's what I strongly believe because using land for agriculture is a terrible idea. You coat the field in solar panels, which is much better for the environment as well, I might add. I mean, the local environment in terms of, you know, if you grow homogenous crops like wheat or corn in a field, there's basically not supposed to be anything there except wheat or corn. That's what the farmer is trying to achieve. So biodiversity obviously sucks. Whereas if you have solar panels, you can have wild, you know, wildflowers and meadows underneath the solar panels and sheep grazing between them to keep the grass under control. That's great for biodiversity, certainly compared to a homogenous field of one crop. So I think there's huge benefits to be had from looking at how we use land and how we can help to return some of that land to a more natural sort of way of being while still harvesting, harvesting energy and having plenty of food, which is quite important. We don't want to starve. So lots of great things that can come in the future. And I mean, that's one of the things I, I like to be quite positive and optimistic about life because Otherwise, you know, it'd be terrible. I don't want to be, oh, no, definitely positive and optimistic. At this point, I want to say something about the downsides associated with vertical farming. And principally, those downsides relate to the amount of effort and energy that's required in order to achieve the same effect as just planting things in a field. In order to generate that light, given that solar panels are probably about let's say on average 20 percent efficient and then you've got lighting as well which is going to be let's call that 50 percent efficient which would be pretty good but achievable so that would be 10 percent of the 
light that hits your field turns into light you can use. So you're going to need 10 times as much space as you actually would need to just grow the field. That's a bit of a problem. But these are the things which will hopefully improve with a more industrialized process, one that perhaps doesn't use ordinary crops to grow food, but uses something that will work better. And it's answering those questions that, you know, is going to have to happen in order for the whole Mars colonization thing to stand any chance, because we cannot be shipping cabbages from Earth. It's not a goer. In a nutshell, it's finding the solutions to problems like these that I love about space. And, and that's basically all I wanted to say. I think, you know, vertical farms, yay. I'd love to go visit. This is, I'm building up a little list of people that I should contact. Some of them I'm sure will just be like, no, we cannot have a tour. But hopefully some will be interested. Batteries charging sweetly. Okay, awesome. I'll leave them to it. Okay, well, I, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you like. The links are in the description. I'll say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters because you guys are awesome. And I'll see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.